Before we get ahead of ourselves, let's slow it down a bit for a moment, because there are some very important things to know and to pay attention to. So far, I started by cooking off some onions, and I cooked them well to get a char on them instead of a slower and gentler caramelization. Next, I made a bacon weave. You might notice from the video that after the weave looked perfect, I went back off camera and added an extension onto the end of it. This is because I wasn't sure the weave would completely wrap around both patties of beef with the cheese inside. I wanted to make sure I had plenty of bacon weave. It is always a good idea to make a larger bacon weave than you think you might need. Better safe than sorry. And in this case, bacon was buy one get one free, so I went to town. Then I made some burger patties using 80-20 chuck and cooked them. Well, not exactly. First, the burgers I'm showing you here, I cooked in a simple nonstick pan, but I cooked them mostly raw. This was done on purpose because I knew they were going to cook much longer in the oven later. All I wanted was enough sear on them to hold them together and not fall apart. I didn't go for a crusty sear either because I did not want them to be dry in the end. I had no clue as to how long they would actually end up cooking in the oven. Because remember, this recipe is a complete experiment for me. I did make some mistakes along the way, which I'll get to in a minute. I cooked the bacon weave on a rack in the oven at 375 for almost 30 minutes to start with. Normally, regular bacon strips, they will cook in about 10 to 15 minutes usually, but when they are all woven together, the mass increases and they take much longer. Also, since they are woven together, they cover each other up, so I wanted to avoid crispy outsides and raw insides. I knew I would be wrapping the weave around the burgers later, so the idea was to melt a lot of the fat off of it, and then slowly cook the bacon through, but not make it crisp. If it gets crispy now, then when I try to wrap it in the end, it will crack and break apart. So after about 30 minutes, it looked mostly cooked, but not crispy, so I took it out to cool. I cooked the bacon first, and then par cooked the burgers second and put them on a rack to cool while I prepared the rest of the burger. While the burgers and the bacon rested and cooled down, I made a sauce to go under the burger. I used mayo as a base, then added some chili sauce and prepared horseradish. For this sauce, you wanna go with hot horseradish. So don't get the stuff that's already made into a sauce. That stuff is mostly mayonnaise anyway, as far as I know. Then I added black pepper and minced up a pickle spear into the mix. This is an incredible sauce and it goes well with just about any kind of burger or sandwich I can think of. It's also fantastic for dipping french fries. The cheese I went with here is smoked Gouda cheese. It's a wonderful cheese and one of the reasons why I went with it is not only because it tastes really well with the bacon and the burgers, but it does not get too liquidous when it melts. I did not want the cheese oozing out everywhere when it cooked. I cut a nice slab to sandwich in between the beef patties. Wrapping the burger is a bit tricky. I placed one patty down, then the cheese, then the other patty on top. I positioned the burger stack so that I could roll the bacon wrap up around it. I want to point out that now, the bottom side of the bacon is showing all the way around the burger and it has lots of congealed white fat on it that does not look very appetizing. However, this is all going to melt down when you put it back in the oven. The idea is to tuck the top of the bacon down inside itself, under the bottom patty. So cut off any excess that you need in order to make it fit. And remember, you can always cut off more bacon if you need to, so don't cut too much off to start or you might regret it. Now the bacon seemed a bit loose around the burger. This is why I should have gone with thinner bacon, it would have been tighter. So I get some butcher's twine and tie it up gently so it hold together in the oven. I tied it snug, but not too tight. Putting the whole wrap package back onto the rack seam side down, I put it back in the oven at 375 for about another 15 minutes. I kept checking on it to make sure the cheese was not leaking out of the bottom. After about 15 minutes, I was worried that the burgers might be overcooked and that the bacon would not be crispy enough. So I put the oven up to 400 degrees and let it go about another 5 to 10 minutes. When I was satisfied with how it looked, I removed it from the oven. I let it rest again for about 5 minutes before building because I knew it would be way too hot to bite into anyways. Now I already knew that the nice brioche bun I had was too small, but I put it on screen anyways to show the failed planning. However, I had some wonderful dark German wheat bread that I toasted. I am not a fan normally of wheat bread, but if you've ever had dark German wheat bread, it's nothing like regular wheat bread. It may be one of my favorite breads, and I use it for almost any kind of sandwich on a regular basis, and that's why I had it in the house anyway. Now, to build the burger. Bottom piece of toast gets the sauce on it. A good amount of it, too. Then the insane, bacon-wrapped monstrosity gets placed on. 
charred onions go on top of that. Then the top piece of toast caps it off, and I press it together to see if it will hold. And it does. So here's a couple of mistakes that I made along the way. First, I should have gone with the thinnest bacon possible. This wasn't super thick bacon, but it was far too thick to get a tight wrap around something like a burger. And second, I made the burger patties much too large. These were much smaller than I normally make for myself, but the idea is usually the patties should be the same size as the bun, or a little larger I think is better, because then it shrinks when it cooks. But by par cooking them like I did, kept them large and they didn't shrink at all, so it ended up being too big in the end. After I wrap the bacon around it, this becomes a pretty insane burger. I can't say it's necessarily a bad thing though. I should have been thinking sliders, like White Castle sized sliders, only with regular sized buns or at least have some kind of monster bun standing by, just in case. Only two things left to do. First, cut it in half and see what it looks like.